Well, good morning everyone and welcome again to Kilsyth Anderson Church online. I'm really glad that you've joined us this morning. Today is a special day. This is the day that the Lord has made so it's always special when we come together to worship and praise him for all of his blessings and all of his goodness towards us. You probably see behind me a number of cards we have had a great blessing over this last week as we have welcomed our very first grandson, uh, Luke, into this world. And uh, it's great to say that baby and mum and all the family are doing uh, really well with this happy event. Well, we've taken some time off again this week to uh, be visiting and enjoying these special days and also enjoying uh, the messages in your cards. Uh, thank you very much uh, for them. It's lovely to have kind words, words of blessing, words of encouragement, words of grace. And today our service is about words, about words to live by, about words to listen to, words to meditate upon. And the Reverend Bill Moore is going to be speaking to us about the importance of the words of Jesus. So thank you to him for uh, leading our thoughts today. I hope you enjoy this time together. Let us worship God. 2,000 years ago, two worlds converged, heaven and earth, divine and human, spiritual and natural, fully God fully man. He is storm calming, life giving, earth shaking, sin washing, death overcoming, son of the most high. He is the word made flesh, undeserved gift, body beaten, blood shed, ultimate sacrifice, redeeming son of man. He is the great I am, prince of peace, lord of lords, king of kings, alpha and omega, beginning and the end. He is the Lamb of God, Almighty One, worthy to be praised. Let us worship the risen King, our Saviour, Redeemer, Deliverer, Lord Christ Jesus. Glorious in heaven 
Heavenly Father, you tell us in Scripture, God is our shelter and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not be afraid, even if the earth is shaken and mountains fall into the ocean depth, even if the seas roar and rage and the hills are shaken by violence. The Lord Almighty is with us. Heavenly Father, we praise you for the many promises you give us and for your constant reminder you never withdraw from us. You are our constant help, more present than a relative or friend can be. You remain faithful even if the world's most secure structures fail. We pray for everyone who is listening to this live stream. Some will be on mountain tops while others are in the valley of despair. Maybe feeling more anxious now than at the beginning of lockdown. We pray especially for those with health issues awaiting delayed appointments and treatments, those with anxieties about finance, family or the future, those who are lonely, cut off from their church family at this time, those fearful what it means to them as we gradually come out of lockdown. Lord, may they know no matter their circumstances, you are with them. We pray too for the minister and leaders of the churches we represent, that you will guide them and give them wisdom as they work out ways we can meet safely in the future. We thank you for Alan who has made this live stream possible and pray you will bless him and his family at this time. Lord Jesus, as the new school terms start shortly in Scotland, we pray for local authorities, head teachers and teachers as to try and make sense of the ever-changing guidelines and return to school. We pray that they will get clarity on how to protect their pupils and themselves. Be with them in their anxiety. We would ask the same for parents, concerned about the safety of their children. Give them the assurance they need. David in Psalm 61 tells us, As my heart grows faint, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. May that be our prayer too. Father, forgive us if, with so much going on round about us, we become insular, forgetting about our brothers and sisters in Christ who are also suffering around the world. COVID-19 has hit the poorer countries very hard, where there is little health care, sanitation or other basic resources. We thank you for those who have responded to the call to help and ask you will give them the strength health and resources necessary in these challenging times. There are a number of Christians throughout the world who cannot meet in church buildings, not because of the virus, but fear of persecution. Lord, so far this year, there have been an average of 11 Christians a day killed in countries like Nigeria, India and Iran. Many more have been injured and churches burnt down. Lord, we thank you for the faithfulness of and resilience of these Christians and ask that we, they will know that you are home, upholding them as you promised. Give them your peace. Father, we ask these prayers in the name of Jesus, confident of his love and protection no matter our circumstances. Amen. Words. You know, they hold incredible power. They hold the power to build someone towards God. Or, of course, to push them away from God. An unkind word spoken, it can harden somebody's heart. But a loving word? Okay, well that will fill their heart with joy and peace. As Christians, we should fill our words with love. Of course, just as Jesus did. Value the power of speech. Make your tongue a blessing. Your words can love. 
just like the love of Jesus Christ. Your words can play a vital role into bringing a life to God. Speak with loving truth and kindness and it will open the hearts of men and women. The hearts, of course, who desperately need our God. Chapter 5, verses 38 to 48. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Amen. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for the invitation through Alan to come and be with you this morning. 
we are with you most Sunday mornings, would you believe? Because after our own home service in, here in Carrick Fergus, we flick over to Tulsaith Anderson and we've even been in the chat room. Isn't science fantastic? Anyway, I was asked, and words can't express the joy and the pleasure and the th gratitude, so I, I'm not even going to try, but thank you very much. Liz keeps in touch with some of you, I know, and um, I'm not so good. I'm not so good. Give her a wee ring. Give her a ring. We have worship with you here in uh, uh, Kilsyth for many years. Liz knows the exact number in the months, uh, and uh, it's great to be back. Now, I'm just going to imagine... Imagine with me that you're all sitting there in your pews, uh, I suppose socially distanced, and uh, I'm at the front, also two, uh, two metres away from you. That's not very far. But, and uh, I, I've got something with me here. Now, it's um, about to, it's a handkerchief and uh, it's had a checkered career. Oh, uh, and uh, it's, let's get in the same wavelength. It's, it's a writing implement. It's not a lollipop. It is a writing implement in underneath the handkerchief. Okay? But now, 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 I want you to tell me what kind of writing instrument it is. Is it a pen or is it a ball pen? And, and an ink pen or a ball pen? Or is it a pencil? Or is it uh, a, a, a jelly pen if you come across those? Or even a felt tip pen? Is it? Let me... Yes, yeah. no, 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 yes, it's a ball pen. Well done. Well done over there. Uh, now, uh, that's, uh, what kind of a ball pen do you think it is? Is it a clicker type? Is it a screw type? Is there a top on it? Or uh, is it a, um, some other kind of pen? No, no, <laughs> good guess, but no, no, no. Yes, someone down in the second row there has shouted out, it is a clicker pen. A clicker. We'll just call it a clicker pen, okay? And uh, we've decided it's a ball pen, it's a clicker pen. Uh, what colour do you think the body of the pen is? Orange? No. Green? No. White? Blue? Clear? No. Did you say blue? Ah, yeah, it's a blue pen, blue body. I know that, but you don't. And uh, now, what colour of ink do you think it is? Is it red or green or blue? Red? No, no, no. Ah, right, okay. You've got it. It is blue ink, right? So, um, what's, what do you think it says on it? Oh, you, you'll never, ever guess that. So, here goes. I'm going to reveal the, the object to you. And it says on it, Mission Aviation Fellowship, Flying for Life. Uh, that's a, a little a group I work with now in, in Ireland and I go and do talks uh, about a great organisation, but I have not time uh, right now. Uh, it's a clicker pen, it's a ball pen. Now, did you see what happened there? Different people had different ideas and, occasion, and, and now and then one of them was right. And the next time round, the next question, it was another one that was right, and yet a third and a fourth and a fifth. And together we built up the picture, but uh, it wasn't complete until we took off the top and we revealed. What's that got to do with the Bible? Well, when I discovered this great truth about the Bible, it really liberated my thinking and gave me a new life. I was really pretty low because there were so many questions. And then I'll come to some of them in a, in shortly. And uh, I was able to adapt and learn to love my Bible once again. But it was with a different kind of view. Let me explain to you. Here's what it says in Hebrews. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors many times and in many ways. Uh, but then he said, um, he is the one, but in this, these days, he has spoken to us through his son. He is the one through whom God created the universe, the one whom God has chosen to possess all things at the end. He reflects the brightness of God's glory and the exact likeness of God's. 
uh, own being, sustaining the universe with his powerful word. And after achieving for forgiveness for the sins of mankind, he sat down in heaven at the right hand side of God, the supreme power. Have you got that? In the past, God was showing us things through the prophets and through the law and through the Old Testament. But in the last days, now, Jesus shows us the complete picture. Have you got that? It's very, very important. You see, for all down through the ages, wise men and philosophers and religious people and uh, all, the, all sorts of folk have sat under their banyan tree or in their cave or in the desert and uh, they've sat and they've thought and then, or in their study and uh, monastery wherever and they've sat and thought about God and sometimes they got a little bit right I mean someone has found it uh, has thought about it and said ah oh, God is the creator of all things dead on and then maybe even some have said God is just. God is a God of justice. In fact, someone said God is perfect. You've got to have the uh, it's philosophers that talk about God. If, if there is one, has to be perfect. Otherwise, he wouldn't be God because there would always be some superior being who was perfect. You get that? So anyway, some might even say God is loving and God is light. Now, but they got other things wrong and it was only one here and there and all the words. Now, when we look at the world's religion now, with this in mind, with God, the idea of God coming, God, human beings applying themselves to God, uh, then we can appreciate so many things in other religions. I mean, when I was in India, I was able to, to uh, sympathize, well, I didn't take real part, but I was able to understand the Wali, the festival of lights, and I was able to say, ah, oh, Jesus is light, and you've got a wee bit of it. God is light. I am the light of the world, the way, the truth, and the life. God, Christ, has it all. You, you follow what I'm saying? We, we all the little bits all of the other different religions yes we can appreciate that we can appreciate the the devotion and commitment of the jws when they come to our door i, I admire their stickability and their determination i can uh, think of the um the the, the 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 devotion of the muslims and their prayer life I can admire lots of those things, but they got things wrong. Sometimes they got things wrong. They got, for example, God's, the revengeful God. God is a God of revenge. You know, you, 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 you kill us, says the prophets, and we'll kill you. And they did. And they slaughtered. And they killed even babies. Oh dear. They got it wrong. Because Jesus came along and said, no, love your enemies. If your enemy hurts you, do good to him. And, this, and, and the, the poet in the, one of the Psalms says, blessed is the man who pays you back for what you have done to us, who takes your babies and smashes them against the rock. Oh, I've got to cross over that because that is not Jesus. Jesus, who is God, would rather die than take revenge. He died on the cross when he didn't. He could have got revenge and he could have walked away. But he was supreme. And he said, turn the other cheek. We are not a warlike. If you think that, you're wrong. That was heavy stuff. Because you see, here's his here's teaching about revenge. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But now I tell you, do not take revenge on someone who wrongs you. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, let them slap you on your left cheek too. This is the Son of God. This is the God incarnate. This is what God is like. And then he said, I tell you, 
love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This is not what the Old Testament is saying. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Three times it says that in different places. And here's Jesus saying, Oh, they've been saying that, but I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. And he is the truth, the supreme. He is God incarnate. He is the one. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And if anything contradicts, whether it be in philosophy, whether it be in the Jewish religion, and, and, the, and the Muslims use this book as well, the, the Bible, if anything contradicts what Jesus says, we go with Jesus. That's my new... I, I, this was liberating. Because, you see, if you don't see the Bible like that, you can never find the truth. Because for every verse that you give me, I can give you one that will, that will counteract it. we got to get revenge on, on one of the people who, who kill us and uh, harm us and, and Babylon. Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Ah, bang. But unless we take Jesus as the supreme and if anything else contradicts us in, in literature or anywhere else, we go with Jesus. My friends, I would love to spend 40 minutes with this. I would love to spend a lot of time. But my time is already gone, would you believe? But believe me, that has liberated my whole thinking. And I have learned to love the Old Testament again. Because I see it as men trying to find God. And sometimes they got it wrong. But Jesus never does. He is God. Judge everything by the standard of Jesus. No matter what you come up against in life or whatever anyone tells you, say, would Jesus have said that? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? That is the supreme standard. He is the living word. We don't get saved by anything else, either the written word, the poetic word, the historical word, the philosophical word. He is the living word and we measure everything by our loving, dying, rising Jesus Christ. Have I got a hallelujah? Hallelujah! <laughs> Thank you for having me and may your days be, as, be fine with the Lord. Blessings on you. Well, I hope to be with you myself next week. Uh, but for now, let me just say a blessing. And now may the blessing that comes to us from Almighty God, the God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us, rest and remain with us and with all whom we love this day and evermore. Amen. Well, after our final hymn, um, I've got a little special thing for you. Uh, Lynn has written and has sung a song uh, called Lullaby for Luke. So if you hold on towards the end of the service and you would like to uh, look at some pictures of this uh, new grandson, then we'll share them with you along with Lynn's song. God bless you. Oh